All right, young scholars, here it comes for five. This is about uh, the other uh, remaining triangle congruence postulates we haven't learned about yet. Um, we've So far before today, we've done side, 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 and side, angle, side. Here's some new ones. Uh, the first two use the same labeling system you're used to, and then there's a new one called HL. All right, so let's get on with it. Angle, side, angle. So, as the name suggests, we've got two angles and a side, and just like when we were talking about SAS, the way it was labeled, um, the one thing being between the two others, like this little sandwich kind of thing here, uh, is for a reason. So we have an angle and a side and an angle in one triangle congruent to an angle and a side and an angle in the other triangle. Uh, and it very importantly kind of has to go that way, so that the side we're talking about is the side that's between those two angles. I couldn't have angle A, angle B, and like this side over here because that side wouldn't be between, wouldn't be the connector between the two angles. Just like uh, we had a similar thing happening when it was side, angle, side. The angle was between the two sides. Here it's angle, side, angle, so the side has to be between the two angles. So just like with side, angle, side, when there's that middle one, we, we refer to it as the one that's included between the other two. So let's do uh, actual identification on here. Um, if we are, if, if we were trying to prove that this triangle here was congruent to some other triangle. I'd be, say I was talking about angle A, so says over here angle A, and angle C in another um, triangle. If these two angles here were congruent to some other triangle and that angle and this angle were the angles I was talking about in both, um, AC is the only side in here, angle, side, angle, that I would consider as part of angle, side, angle. Okay. So then the question is, on the next one, for, for uh, the green one here, what's the included side between angle, I'll change the green so it'll stay that way. Uh, what's the included side between angles A and B? So if I was talking about angle A, congruent to some other triangle, uh, an angle in another triangle, and B here was congruent to an angle in another triangle, what side would I need here? Which side of the triangle am I looking at to complete the angle side angle set? It has to be the side that connects these two angles. I think this is a little bit easier to find than the one, um, than finding the correct angle on side, angle, side. Finding the right side and angle, side, angle seems to be easier. Okay. All right, here's another one, angle, angle, side. Well, that one before I was saying, well, it wouldn't be angle, side, angle if we didn't have this side. If it was this side over here, yeah, it wouldn't be angle, side, angle. It'd be angle, angle, side. So angle, angle, side, what's nice about it is it actually works. Um, side, side, angle didn't work, but angle, angle, side actually does work. And we'll explore that a little bit in the sketch pad activity. You'll see what that is. Anyway, so if I have two angles and one side in one triangle, congruent to two angles and one side in another triangle, and it looks like this if it's the side that's not between the two. So that's the way they write it this way. This side is not between these two. Um, you write it that way. Now, one could be going clockwise and the other could be going counterclockwise. That's fine. Um, it has to be the side um, kind of paired up with the... The, the same angle in the same way. Like here we have the one rainbow angle and the two rainbow angle, and you see where this one tick side is? It's the side next to the one rainbow. Same down here, it's, the, it's, it's connecting to that. So it's all about kind of the order and about what's attached to what and what's sort of neighborly. So here it kind of went, if we go around the triangle, angle, angle, side, it went two, two arc angle, matches up with this, one arc angle was the next angle in order, sort of around the triangle, and then the side was on the one, the one was, was marked with one. So in other words, if I had another triangle, I was trying to say it was congruent to ABC here, and I had maybe that angle look like that, and that angle look like this, and I had one up down, I was saying this side was congruent to that side. This wouldn't work. This is not angle, angle, side in the same arrangement. Yes, it's an angle and an angle on the side, and the side's not between the angles, but it doesn't match up with this one over here. So that's something you kind of have to be worried about. That's what we mean by it has to be the correct one. It has to be the corresponding side. Okay, we'll see more of that in the examples when we start doing some problems. So we're ready, we're uh, reviewing sort of the four that we've already done because they kind of look the same in terms of the way they're conventionally named. And this is very standard in, in all geometry books and things like the SAT and the ACT and, you know, things they'll talk about uh, in other schools beyond this class. This is very standard geometry terms. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. And there's a picture to remind you of each one. Okay. Uh, but there's one more we can actually use. It's this one called HL. 
it's the one of these things that's not like the others, but it's also a perfectly valid triangle congruence. So we're going to have five of them. These four that have the S's and A's in their name, and then this one about HL. So why is it called HL? Well, it's called H because in some triangles, namely those that have a right angle, we name one side, particularly the one opposite the right angle, as the hypotenuse. Ooh, can I write this? Yeah, while I'm talking? Okay. Hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is special because it's the side opposite the right angle. If we have the hypotenuse in one triangle, congruent to the hypotenuse of another right triangle, and some other side, well, the other sides of a right triangle are called the legs. So all we need is a hypotenuse and a leg, um, and that's enough to say that yeah, and it's actually true. It's going to make it so these triangles have to be congruent. If you look carefully at the way this is labeled, this isn't, this isn't in the right order for any one of these. This is two sides and an angle. Well, the only one we have with two sides and an angle is this one, and this one said that the angle had to be between the two sides, and here it's not. Um, so here we have the stipulation that it has to be a right triangle. So that is a big deal. We have to have a 90 degree angle, otherwise this would be a side-side angle, and side-side angle isn't one of them. So it only works because it's a special case of the right triangles. That does not mean that this other stuff doesn't also work for right triangles. You could prove two right triangles are congruent by side side side. You could prove two right triangles are congruent by angle side angle. I mean, any of these work for right triangles also. But there's this special one that we have to be talking about right triangles first. That's why it says H for hypotenuse. OK, we're ready to start doing some. Oh, this is going to be a short video. All right, you guys. Uh, OK, I think I'm going to run out of space here. You can't see the bottom of the screen very well, can you? Okay, um, we'll be fine. All right, so are these triangles congruent? And if so, why? Does this start to look familiar? This was all over the last notes video, and I tell you what, there's a bunch of these on the test. And this kind of skill, being able to figure out are there triangles that are congruent and how do you know, is really the central idea of all the proofs we do this unit. All right, so when you see triangles stuck together, realize that, hey, you know what? I can use this piece in both triangles, so that counts. Now looking at what's marked in both, because BD is kind of to itself. What's marked in both, I have an angle on each triangle there, and I have an angle here in both triangles, and I have a side in both triangles. That to me looks like, okay, there's an angle, there's a side, there's an angle. And yes, it is the side that is between the two angles, so we're talking about this one. Yeah, those are congruent. And it's triangle, let's say ABD on the left, is congruent to triangle. Um, well, if it's A and one triangle has to go with the corresponding thing that triangle would be C, we have left to figure out, is this a mirror image or is this a twisted image of the other triangle? Uh, well, angle B in one triangle has to go with angle B in the other one, so I think we're looking at this kind of lineup. Okay, down here, well, we have vertical angles. We could use vertical angles for this, or we could use that third angle theorem. I have all kinds of angles congruent. All the angles in one are congruent to all the angles in another. But I don't have any sides. And you notice back on this, even with HL, every single one of these has some kind of side. This one doesn't have any angles, but um, there's a length in, in here somewhere on all of them. So if all you have is angles, uh, we can't really do anything. I, ha I don't have enough information to say whether or not those are actually congruent. All right, let's see. Well, before I even do any thinking, I'll go, wait a minute. I know I have vertical angles here with the red angles and that angle over there and this side. Okay, I have an angle on the side and an angle in each one. Here I have an angle. Oh, it looks like angle, side, angle. Okay, great. But in this triangle I have angle, side, and whoa, I would have liked to have had that angle. This angle's too far away. It's not an angle, side, angle type uh, set kind of in one little package here. So because of that, I don't think I have it. Uh, I could go a little farther on this though. Let's get rid of this other stuff that doesn't really the congruence mark. I did, I did just think of this. I could even say, I know these angles are congruent because of the third angle theorem. So there's that, congruent to that. Now, do I have angle, angle, side, or anything anywhere now? Well, this one tick is between the one and two tick reds. The, the, this side here is not between, so it doesn't even line up. There's no way I can make it so this arrangement's going to be congruent to this arrangement anyway. So I can't tell if they're congruent. All right, this one down here. Um, this is looking pretty good. Of course, I can... I can count that in both triangles because BD, B, sorry, MB is a is a segment on both. Uh, this is a right triangle, so that gets me thinking. Oh, maybe this is HL. For HL, it has to be hypotenuse. Oh, good, I have hypotenuse, and yeah, another side. That's a leg. So yeah, this is true by HL. And so I'll call the first one ABM, and that's congruent to well, A in one triangle should go with C in the other triangle. 
the right angle, which is at M, should go with the right angle in the other triangle, so I think I have to do it that way. Okay. All right, so when you're doing these proofs, here's some hints. Mark the diagram with the given information when they, they, they tell you the given and the proof. Uh, I've been saying that for a while, so that should not be a surprise. Um, if you see any shared stuff or if you see any vertical angles like I was just doing those last few problems, um, go ahead and mark those things and, and list them in the proof as to why they have to be true. Uh, parallel lines, that means stuff like alternate interior or corresponding interior or corresponding angles. Those show up a lot. Um, and then stuff from midpoint or bisector. For anything that you know has to be true at the beginning of the proof, just go ahead and list it and mark it as to why, why it is true. We'll, and we'll do that here in a minute. Um, that, can, that can be a big, a big help too. And then really this number four is what we've already been doing. Okay, so here's some actual proofs. Uh, all right, so one is congruent to four. Let's mark these. One is congruent to four. And three is congruent to two. Okay, so or that's of course given. Well, there's no step numbers here. I guess it doesn't really bother me if it doesn't bother you. It looks like there's supposed to be a step two in here. This is one of those partially filled out proofs. And yes, there's one of these on the quiz and there's one or two of these on the test. Uh, the reason for here, I don't know what it is yet, but I know what kind of thing it has to be. It has to be a side, 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 or an angle, side, angle, or a HL, or something like that. It's one of those five triangle congruence reasons. What reflexive here is even helpful in those two triangles? Remember, reflexive is when things are congruent to themselves. I'm looking at this triangle and this triangle. Oh, there we go. CA is congruent to itself. That could be helpful. That's a CA. And I listed it. Okay, so now in the triangles, what do I have? I have two angles and the side between looks to me like angle side angle. All right, we got about four minutes left. Okay, angle A is congruent to angle C. Let's list that stuff, or let's mark it. And BM, this looks like something we just did in the, oh, it's a little different, in the earlier examples. Okay, so the given stuff, I can take to the bank. I'm gonna cheat, because I'm gonna, I can write my book. And I know down here I need this. AMB is gonna be congruent to CMB. Don't know why, but I know it's one of the five. Okay, from this stuff, uh, oh wait, I know I have a, uh, a shared thing there. Is that gonna be enough? Let's mark that because it's in both triangles. So that's sort of a freebie, but you have to list it. When I get to that reason down here, and I'm gonna list one of those five things like side, 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 or angle, side, angle, the reader has to be able to go back up in the proof and find all the things you're listed here. So if I say angle, side, angle, I have to be able to find an angle and a side and an angle up in this list somewhere. So far I have an angle, I would call that an angle, that counts. I'm not going to make it list that separately. So that counts as an angle right there. That's an angle. Oh, and here's a side. That's good. Of course, that's by reflexive. So now I have two angles and a side marked. That's good enough for congruence. Okay. Here's another one. Sorry about these gray backgrounds. I couldn't get that to not happen. Let's label the given stuff on here. AM is congruent to BM. Uh, angle A is congruent to angle B. So first thing, how do I know angle M1 is congruent to M2? That's a horrible naming system. I would have called that angle one congruent to angle two. Well, why are these congruent? Well, these are vertical angles. You see those a lot. They are your friends. You're gonna use those a lot. Okay, uh, then what can we prove by ASA? Well, the only triangles that are marked here and they've got all that stuff in them is triangle CMB is congruent to triangle D. Look carefully how this is going, MA. And then after triangles are congruent, then I can say crazy things like, well, any part of one triangle, AD, is congruent to that same part, uh, this thing down here. Why is that congruent to this thing up here? Because it belongs to triangles that are already congruent. That's what this comes from. Whoops, didn't mean to press that. Pause that and read it. We talked about that in the last lesson, actually. Last proof, notice how fast I'm going, sorry. Let me pre-fill it. All right, I marked everything I could here. It says PR is a bisector. That just basically tells me that this angle is the same thing as this, and that's gonna be because it's a bisector. And so by virtue of angle bisector, I'm able to mark that. And of course, we do have a reflexive side in here. That's nice. And at this point, I can see congruent triangles, and it's good that I do, because there's no other way to get this thing to be congruent other than saying it belongs to something bigger. So that's a nice hint. When you see it at end of, ending of a proof that's not um, about triangles congruent, it might be one of these. It comes from those two triangles that are congruent by SAS, which is actually marked in the diagram.
All right, see you in class.